Well, this is Dr. Stan. I guess is Bob Chapman of the International Forecaster. Our telephone number is one triple eight two four liberty one triple eight two four liberty or four six four eight two nine five. And before we go on, Bob, would you like to tell people how they can get in touch with you? Or subscribe to the International Forecaster, and I will tell you it comes twice a week. I mean, it's 25 pages, sometimes 30 pages, uh, but it's fascinating information. And if you have any hope of surviving in the very t- difficult times that lie ahead, you need to know what's really going on. And I believe that Bob's overall advice is excellent. Uh, and what he is telling you about what's happening to our currency is vitally important. If you hope to survive or maintain any of your life savings, why, you better listen. Because remember, as Richard Russell said, he who loses the least wins. We are all going to lose a large part of what we've spent our whole life working for. But you want to maintain some of what you've got and tell people how to get hold of your newsletter, Bob. Well, the forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. Uh, We publish by email. It usually runs... 35 pages each time on Wednesdays and Saturdays. We also have a hard copy that goes out to those who are not on the Internet. And you can access the forecaster and a free introductory copy by going to our site, theinternationalforecaster.com. The International, F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R.com. You can email us at bob at intforecaster dot com, or you can call toll free eight hundred three seven five four one eight eight. That's eight hundred three seven five four one eight eight. All right, fine. I think that that is a, a, certainly a, a very important thing that you will want to get if you're out there in the listening audience. Our telephone number one triple eight two four Liberty, one triple eight two four Liberty or four six four eight two nine five. For our people listening, understand that this whole thing is created. How have they dried up you know, the amount of money that, says that the banks don't want to lend, the small banks? Well, of course, they frightened them to death. And, of course, I mean, which bank would want to loan money to people if they're not sure they're going to get it back? They load it on a house, and the value of the house falls another 20 or 30 percent. Why? Of course, they can, uh, they're going to lose their shirts. And the same thing is true on commercial property. And when everything is falling, it's like trying to catch a falling knife banks to want to lend under those circumstances and besides that the Federal Reserve is giving them money so on all their deposits they're leaving with the Federal Reserve for the first time in history they're paying interest on the reserves uh, to dry up all the money that would be available for the loans if they if the bank couldn't do that they would be forced to loan money but they don't want them to loan money but they do not want the public to know that they want the public to believe that they're doing everything they can to uh, get the credit markets working and of course they're in cahoots with the big banks, which of course you know are not lending. They're simply you know, they are lending, but certainly you know at 15% interest, 10, 15% interest, and then you've got to you know put up your mother-in-law and your wife and all your children in hawk so that you know, they can be sure they're going to get their money back. Well, so what about the the uh, the letters of credit that they were used in the past to facilitate international trade? At one point in one of your newsletters, you said it was very difficult to get a letter of credit to, facilitate, for instance, buy things over in China. Do they still have restrictions on that or not? Uh, they do, but uh, they did loosen up quite a bit. And so that problem, in part, uh, has been uh, solved. Uh, but it's not anywhere near what it was before, which means international can, uh, trade can't uh, go back to where it was before. Uh, not really should it because of the lack of buying and the great exporters today, such as China and Japan, are really hurting very badly. And Japan is a stimulus plan of $250 billion, which is like uh, spitting in the ocean. Uh, the Japanese have a plan 
587 billion cash uh, in injection into the economy, plus banking things that'll make it 1.2 trillion. And uh, Europe's doing the same thing, uh, and and so they're all out, uh, you know, creating these aggregates. And uh, again, it's they are not solving the problem. I mean, Japan went through this from '92 until today. They, they've never come out of depression. I mean, they poked their head out two years ago for about a year and a half, and that was the end of it. And they've been in the depression. The only reason they didn't go under is it continued to increase debt, as everybody else is now, and they are doing it more, uh, 200 uh, times GDP, and. Um, and uh, Japan was unsuccessful, and America is going to be unsuccessful. Successful, and the world, which is all doing mostly the same thing, they're all going to be unsuccessful. And uh, when they pull the plug and allow deflation to take over, when I get all their walls, wars going on, and uh, all of their uh, uh, whatever it may be in the way of biological warfare against the people of the world, uh, then uh, everything will be let loose and there will be utter chaos. And, and that's why having food and a filter and weapons and gold and silver coins is so important. And I think people really need to understand that uh, that a world pandemic, now I think this was just a trial, I mean obviously this was a, a very minor thing, they scared everybody, they wanted to see how they could manipulate them, boy did they get them manipulated, they closed 470 schools in the United States, they got people out there wearing masks, afraid to go out, it was all fear, I mean, I mean we knew it was a scam, I mean, 2,000 people die every day of malaria. We're not trying to solve the malaria problem. Let them use DDT because we want them to die. 5,000 people die a day of AIDS. And we're not addressing the AIDS epidemic using standard public health techniques. So we know that the, the loss of you of 16 people from this epidemic in Mexico was a scam. In other words, they wanted to frighten people. But I think down the line, Bob's right, we're going to have a major epidemic because that will paralyze the economy of the world and plunge the world into chaos, and then, of course, the people will be willing to accept this one world government. That is what this is really all about, creating the one world government, out of creating order out of chaos. Well, Bob, uh, we've got George calling from Toronto. Again, our telephone number, one 24 liberty one 24 liberty or 464-8295. Before we put George on, uh, I had read someplace that it is estimated that Throughout the world, they have lost about 45% of the artificial wealth that had been created in, in housing, artificial wealth created in the uh, stock markets throughout the world. Do you think that's a fairly accurate figure that 45% uh, of the wealth of the world has been destroyed here in the last few months? Yes. Yes, that, that, that's a good, a, a good estimate. All right, fine. Well, let's go to George calling from Toronto. Hi, George. How are you doing? Hi, Dr. Stan. Hi, Bob. Bob, my question has to do with gold and currency. Up in Canada here, our Canadian dollar has been rising against the U.S. dollar, and I've got some gold bullion certificates, And but I'm afraid that I'm going to be losing on the currency side. Is there any way to hedge against that? Well... It all depends on whether gold goes up against the uh, Canadian dollar, which it will. And uh, the reason uh, I say that uh, is that you have to measure the Canadian dollar versus gold, not the, the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is going to go down. Canadian dollar is going to go up, and other currencies are as well against the dollar. And, in, in, you know, for Canadian trade... It's negative. Uh, for imports to Canada, it's positive. Uh, the main thing to watch is gold. Uh, who are your gold certificates with? They're with a, um, a Scotiabank. 
in, in well, Canada. you're okay as long as Scotia doesn't go bankrupt. Right. Um, you know, if, if you've got gold with them, I would convert it to coins and take delivery. Okay. What about I mean, that's what, if I lived in out, Ontario or B.C., that's what I'd do. What's that last part you said? I said if I lived in Ontario or B.C., that's what I would do. Buy gold coin. Right. Convert it and take the money and buy gold coins. You can buy you Canadian talk, maple leaves and both silver and gold. Uh, that should suffice. Okay. And then you get a safe, or if you have one, put those gold coins or silver coins or both into your safe along with your important papers. 